Thank you, Sergio, Marcela. Good morning, everyone. So if we can please have the slides on screen. My name is Gonzalo Navarro. I represent IPXO and with me, I have Pablo Yurikas, our VP, our Strategic Relations VP and Aurimas Lauduskas. He is the uh, chief of IPXO and he was a critical participant in developing this proposal. Just a disclaimer. I mean, this presentation might turn into a bilingual presentation at any point, so please make sure uh, you get your headset. And if you have more technical questions about our proposal, just well, make sure you have your headset for translation. In the first place, let me just say that we really consider this topic very thoroughly for a while, not just at LACNEC region, but other regions as well, where we have made headway on how to address this topic. Last year, we participated at the Fortaleza panel, where I believe we spoke for the first time uh, for the community, there were different visions, great, great discussion. So the idea of this proposal is to build on that discussion and to address it from uh, a point of view of the need that we see in the Latin American and Caribbean region. So we will begin by saying what the current status is, as we see it at least. There is a long wait list for IPv4 addresses available in the region. As we all know, LACNIC published that last year. There's a seven year wait list for uh, slash 24. There are, there are a number of uh, addresses not announced in the region. That is also a reality. And we estimate that given the fact that it is so hard to get IPv4 addresses that are not being used, we ran the risk of some of them migrating to regions where this can actually be done. So the possible causes is that the some uh, recipients of uh, long blocks do not need or do not want or do not have the desire or possibility to reassign or to do uh, something else with their IPv4 addresses based on the current manual version. There's a gray area. On the one hand, it is not prohibited, but at the same time, there's no specificity as to when this could be possible unless linked to connectivity agreements that in many cases we think this is a way of renting or, or leasing IP uh, addresses anyway. So our proposal is to bring clarity and guidance to assignees for once and for all as part of LACNIC policy as to what can and cannot be done. But having standards, the needed standards that will protect end users or recipients of IP addresses and the community as a whole, developing policies that are clear, healthy, as we've seen in other regions being implemented and perfected together with the community engagement. This is a policy proposal that we want to discuss, to put out there, to get feedback, to enhance it. We believe this is a great opportunity to continue discussing and making headway in this topic together. The objectives of our proposal, because, well, we've seen there have been trouble so far, but we want to find solutions now to increase flexibility in the use of resources. We want third parties to be able to use IP4 delegated addresses with use that are free of risk, free of risk, non-discrimination. I mean, we're not saying that you can test, you can rent, but let's test. Let's test sandboxes, as they're called in some places. We want to make connectivity easier. There's over 1,000 companies in the wait list. I've been approached since Merida up until today 
over 110 small ISPs. We know how many small ISPs there are in Argentina, Brazil, Ecuador. They need Slash 24 to start their business, to run their business or to operate. Slash 23 and those resources are not available and that is definitely impacting connectivity in the region and something that we do need to address because it's critical. They cannot access these resources. I mean, they can do it from elsewhere, from other regions, abstracting it, but they want resources in the region. It's more trustworthy for them and it is better to use resources that have been assigned by LACNEC. And finally, make or streamline processes. Sometimes they are very complex. We need to go through connectivity agreements and it makes everything longer and it's just better to be honest and have standards that are applicable to our community and that have been agreed upon by the community. Our proposal, and I don't want to take up too much time, as to our proposal is basically, I mean, we are using some assumptions, assumptions under which we could authorize this uh, delegation or sub-delegation. And on screen, you can see examples supporting infrastructure, collaboration or joint projects with different entities to, to promote shared use, sub-delegation and so on. We believe this could be an initial set of cases, but of course, this can be perfected. This can be enhanced. We can reach different agreements as to how to move forward, but um, we believe it is important. And finally, the IPv4 address block has to be uh, registered, and this is very important, and this could be the first step for accountability, for responsibility of those who reassign or reuse resources. There's a number of safeguards that we need to have in place, not to overburden LACNEC and not to create more red tape, but for LACNIC to, to, to really have clarity over who has which resources, how are they being assigned, who's responsible, who we could contact so that information needs to be included as well and also the information time in uh, the, the period under which they need to register for LACNIC. We need to register this allocation. We believe seven days is a reasonable time to do so without overburdening LACNIC's uh, staff. Also, the protection on the use of information and the who is a database and also with regards to this set of assumptions under which we could subdelegate, this is not a breach of LACNIC policies. Thank you so much. And any questions you have on the policy or maybe technical issues, my colleagues here with me, well, in English, they'll be able to answer any question that you might have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gonzalo. <laughs> This proposal has not been analyzed in terms of its impact, so we're going to start with the discussion time. We invite you to share your doubts, opinions, or comments on the proposal that was presented. Here in the room, you have two microphones, and those of you who are in uh, uh, Zoom, you, in the Zoom platform, you can uh, Post your questions in the Q&A panel. You have a second choice there that is raising your hand and you can ask for the floor and you'll be able to ask a question directly. So we are going to limit uh, the time of interventions. You have two minutes to ask the author and the author in turn has two minutes to respond. We have simultaneous translations, so please speak uh, slowly and uh, whenever possible in your native language. And if you're going to speak, uh, say who you are, the uh, organization you belong to, and your position, whether you are for or against uh, uh, the proposal. And if you're against, say why. So let's get started. Uh, the microphone here, please. Go ahead, Jordi, Jordi Pellet. I'm against the proposal for several reasons that I'm going to try to briefly 
uh, mentioned so as not to go beyond two minutes. Uh, the proposal has absolutely no uh, uh, raison d'etre. It's not uh, justified. It, you, we don't guarantee the use uh, of the addresses within the region, and that's relevant because one of the problems that we have, as there is no solution in this region, is that the resources go outside and then they are leased inside. So this proposal is not solving this problem. When we change uh, the assignment, we are creating several problems, some of which uh, have already been seen in different proposals, and that's why they have not thrived. So, uh, for instance, that section is very important for UP IPv6, uh, and I think that uh, for ASN2, although I have my doubts, and that small change even reaches something that was uh, commented previously in a previous proposal by LACNIC is what that it promoted pseudo NIRs and this is very relevant. I don't think that LACNIC was right at the time but it would apply here if they were right. There's another consequence and it is that when uh, amending this session, you are confusing uh, the allocations and assignments and, and LACNIC and users and ISP and users. I've read it uh, several times and I think that uh, that should be clarified to prevent this from happening. There's something that uh, was uh, mentioned in the debate in the last event. I think that Gonzalo was one that said that uh, the, the system that they have as a company devoted to these issues is that they requested specifically as part of the agreement to be uh, to have control against abuses and so on and so forth. But with this proposal, that would disappear. The seven-day window, in my view, um, doesn't make the control possible because if you are leasing addresses for a DOS, or a DDoS, or a spam in seven days, you are done with it. And finally, yes, Jody, round up, two minutes, remember. Yes, and I, I was about to finish, sorry. Well, that finally, I think that the administrative burden that you mention, and, and thank you for mentioning my other proposal, Gonzalo, is not such. And precisely, this is a burden that enables balance between security for the community and the resources may really be traceable and we are, and so to prevent them from being used for abuse. Thank you, Jordi. The authors, do, do you have anything to say? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jordi, for your comments. To tell you the truth, as I was saying, the proposal is a proposal. It can be improved. This is something we want uh, to... Uh, uh, work on obviously there are issues now um, with regard to the blacklist it's not a problem of IPXO as a company but this is a proposal for the community for debate of course there are interests we are a company working in this field but this is a proposal that uh, we present to be d discussed by the community I've been discussing uh, in internet forums for 25 years and I perfectly know how the technical communities move forward in the proposal. So this is the beginning as to whether they are end users or not, or whose end users we are. We were very careful to determine respecting the language, the wording of the policies or LACNIC regulations as to uh, the description of end users. The seven day term can be debated. Um, and of course, you can, among the suggestions, uh, you can include some issues uh, limiting time more or blacklist or, or standards that need to be met by the companies that are engaged in this activity. Our idea is to create an echo, a, a healthy ecosystem covering a, an existing reality that's already happening one way or the other in the region. But building a healthier ecosystem that will be better for the community as a whole, uh, uh, approaching connectivity and the scarcity of IPv4 addresses, and I would say even more, there are IPs that are medium sizes, sized that have addresses available, slash 24, slash 23. Well, that being able to use them, but uh, legally, 
would enable them to move toward IPv6. We've talked to several uh, universities, for instance, they have legacy resources and you know that they can be leased or transferred uh, with uh, no problems whatsoever. So I, I just want to emphasize that we are trying to find a solution to an existing problem through mechanisms that may be efficient and uh, uh, that uh, respect uh, the community. Junior? No? Let's see whether they can uh, help him with the mic. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Juru Konasa of Telic. I agree with the policy, but I think that there are many things still that you need to add. One of the issues is that if it's a LACNIC resource, I don't think that you can use it in another RIR. So if it belongs to LACNIC, then it has to be here in the LACNIC region because it's a resource that belongs to a region that to promote connectivity from here and it shouldn't be taken to other RIRs as APNIC or ARIM, etc. So what I would add to this policy is that, that it should be limited. The limitation is that the prefix may only be used by ASNs from here. And uh, whoever receives these prefixes should also have an ASN here and do an uh, RPKIROA from uh, Melaknik. You can announce the prefix based on a LACNIC ASN with an ROA so as so it won't have um, prefix hijacking and the problems that you're going to have in the internet which is not good. Another very important issue that I saw in your presentation is that you cannot absolutely you cannot compare transfers uh, from uh, other rears to uh, other here we have low transfers, but it's our culture. In Latin America, it's very different from Europe, the United States, Israel, so you can absolutely cannot compare these things. So I agree with the policy. However, I think that uh, it will help many providers in our region, but you need to add much more than what you've already included. Thank you for your comments. Let me start with your second comment. I don't know whether maybe I didn't uh, speak clearly. I've worked in the uh, internet ecosystem for 20 years and I hate the comparisons between uh, Europe or the United States and Latin America. I think that we are completely different cultures and we have completely different needs. That, that's why I mentioned connectivity. I started speaking of the current situation, a seven year uh, waiting list only for a slash 24, over a thousand companies. We know that there are over 50,000 ISPs in the region, many of which are small. If you consider the topography in Brazil, for instance, most of them are ISPs that meet the needs of small communities, and the same applies to Argentina. So I fully agree with your comment as to the, uh, the, the fact uh, that we should not import uh, solutions from abroad. This is a policy that uh, was uh, designed for the region uh, or in the region. As to your first comment, I absolutely agreed that uh, this, uh, there's room for improvement. If you follow Sergio's presentation as to how uh, the uh, policy develops in LACNIC, well, what we aspire is that hopefully this proposal can move forward to the next step so that we can dis debate and receive the input of the entire community as to how to improve it. Precisely what you're saying, it's a good idea. Many of the people, for, and I repeat, many ISPs that use geolocation prefer or would like to have LACNIC addresses to uh, be used. Uh, there are other issues that can be uh, improved. For instance, I don't want to talk about my company, but RPKI by default helps with all these issues. 
putting it as a standard, for instance, would be interesting. So all of those uh, conversations, as I was saying, that all oh, that's very interesting. Hopefully, we'll be able to have it. Our idea is that this policy may move forward uh, at a level of discussion where you can add uh, your feedback. Thank you. Franco. Uh, Fernando Frediani is... Uh, Frigiani is raising his hand. Can you hear us, Fernando? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. In Panama, I'm Fernando Frigiani. And I would like to, in, with regard to that proposal, I would like uh, to speak of the possibility of a uh, um, uh, borrowing re resources from one ASN to another, something that is not officially accepted. The, uh, uh, the, the, the number of resources are um, uh, borrowed for the specific use of infrastructure of the clients. You cannot justify the need as that uh, the resources uh, are borrowed to another AS, and there's no such thing. You can't come to LACNIC and say, give me resources because I'm going to lend them to another ASN. If the organization that is receiving the resources uh, doesn't justify their need, or they return the uh, resources to the IR, or they definitely uh, return it to another organization that needs them. So, and that is how we're going to be ensured that the resources will be used uh, uh, effectively. That is the aim of the proposal. The proposal, in practice, uh, uh, takes uh, away the uh, rare to uh, be able to, to have the resources in a reliable, to manage them in a reliable way, and that uh, so that whoever receives them doesn't uh, should should have the need to explain that they need it. If the organization that is going to use uh, the uh, rational for their needs, then there's already a policy applicable there for transferring resources. So for a simple slash twenty four. Uh, straightforward slash 24, the uh, transfer cost is not high, so that is not a barrier for small ISPs that are just beginning to work. So, uh, um, summarizing that policy that intends uh, to simplify th this use, uh, well, the, we already have uh, the uh, a policy for those transfers, so this policy would only benefit uh, Further, the companies that gain with that flexibilization, quote unquote, the use of resources, but in practice it ends up promoting or removing the need for LACNIC to get engaged in the process, and in practice it eliminates the justification of resources. When they speak of simplifying it, well, all of a sudden we are removing that need for LACNIC to get involved in the process. So I'm against the proposal. Thank you. Well, for the sake of time, because there are many people that want to speak rather than a question, Fernando, that's a comment. So I assume that uh, this will be part of the debate. Yeah, so let's go to the next question. Hernán Arcidiacono from Argentina. Well, first of all, I'm very happy to see that there are two proposals that are trying to solve the same problem, the one that you are proposing and George is. So I welcome this discussion. I think that this is recent and in a way, as you put it, we need uh, the uh, impact analysis and uh, further steps. I mention a couple of things, uh, but without going too in depth. Uh, when I see in the wording that the users appear just mentioned but not limited, uh, it says something like that, that I'm not very happy about it. I think that this should be further adjusted. Um, and in this case, I think that maybe the uh, approach should be gradual, but it might have to be a bit deeper into it. And second, I don't know whether I clearly understand what in the policy, whether in the use that defines whether there's a non-compliance more uh, in terms of accountability rather than operations. So those are just my comments. Thank you. 
Yes, I mean, this is a policy that is in development and we need to improve it, that is for sure. But it is healthy to be able to have this discussion. And as you see, said, having two proposals to address the same topic just makes the discussion richer. This might be two different perspectives, but this is a policy that we can enhance, that we can change. Whether it's restrictive or not, the cases, well, of course, there is room for improvement and see what we need or what will make us all as a community feel comfortable on what we can do with regards to accountability and responsibility under this agreement I have several ideas myself maybe this is not the time right now to discuss them but if this proposal moves on to the discussion phase of course we could discuss other options again I don't want to make it seem like my company because we have very high standards on how to manage IPs and accountabilities that to be the standard. But to be able to discuss this and what makes the community at large feel more comfortable. Okay, there are many questions. Let's see if we can go over them very quickly. Good morning, Luciano Minuchin from Argentina. I agree initially with the proposal. I think this is something that we need to address. It's been a long time due. We've been discussing it for a long time, and it is important to have a formal framework around it. We need to mature the proposal a little bit further. There's room for improvement. I think this is an important topic to address. As Jordi also said, the difference between end user and ISPs, that is key. Most who have IEPs that are currently not being used and can be reallocated are end users and end users technically from portals cannot reassign uh, IP addresses. So that is something that we need to address as to how to formally manage that reassignment because that cannot be done so far. And also understanding that there is a technical background or how to work with our PKIs, ROAs, who are responsible, who are the owners whenever there are any problems on the IPs and what the process would be like and also security issues. What would happen with blacklists and which periods do we need to have IPs under some reallocation or reassignment process and who will actually the end user will be and how to reassign it. So those are things to continue discussing and shaping but I think that this is a good path to take. Just very briefly, I fully agree with you. Thank you, Luciano. Wesley, Wesley Correa from Paraguay. I would dare, I, I, I'm encouraged with the idea and the spirit of the proposal, but I do not, do not agree with the first version. I think there is a lot of aspects to uh, still improve, especially with regards to the requirements of that sub-assigned resource, number resource. It is hard for me to figure out what those requirements would be like, who would define those requirements. That's an important aspect, especially because of when it comes to security, who would be responsible, as Hernan just mentioned, and also the need. So we are not transferring resources to those who don't really need it. We're having a problem with exhaustion. So maybe we could face a situation where someone who really needs it would not receive it. I would suggest putting together a task force or a working group with Jordi as you have a similar proposal. And maybe if you join efforts rather than doing it individually would be more efficient for the community. Arturo? Arturo Servin from Gur. I think that most of you acknowledge due to the Google interconnection, you might know me, but on my other hat on Google is managing IP connections, not just at Google, but Alphabet at large. We know the market, the transference market. We have worked with different brokers and I have two comments. The first one, current transfer policies do not solve the problem that Gonzalo is addressing. So we have, they managed temporary transfer because there are legal mechanisms where we need a temporary transfer, for example, financial reasons. So you're going to lease an IP for 20 years because there is a financial mechanism that makes it more better to lease it or to rent it than purchase. Don't ask me why, but that's how it works. But that's a need. Current policies do not solve that. 
actual need that we have nowadays. Now, based on what I said earlier, we should not just get into too much of a religious discussion. I first uh, said that we're going to consider the RRs, and well, in a way, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with that. But I think that we should be open minded and we should think that it can be done without the intervention of the RRIR. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's no need and ripe for, for those transfers. But I, I don't want to get into that because I'm not sure. I was just looking it up. But we don't want to compare one region to the next. Of course, as we just said, we shouldn't. But that is a case that exists over there. So maybe, Gonzalo, you could analyze that case and you could see our fears in the region, maybe to see what's going on with RIPE. Is it working? Is it not working? Not necessarily to compare ourselves to them, but as a benchmark to see what's happening. I'm not against, I'm not in favor. I think that it's a good initial proposal, but there are some things to fine tune as other people had said. And the discussion on religion, well, we should keep an open mind and analyze it maybe based on figures or statistics and not just by saying that's how we do it and then that's that. Just keep an open mind. Thank you. I'm an agnostic, so I won't get into the religious discussion. Again, the comments are, your comments are very valuable. I mean, this is a very, uh, a great community from a technical standpoint. You are very knowledgeable. You participate in different international forums. So having all this knowledge here in the room, is great. So what I'm saying is like, let's talk about it. Let's move this policy forward following LACNIC policies. Let's move it forward to the discussion stage where we can receive all these comments. We can do a benchmark, a comparative study. If you want to do it, we can analyze it considering the Latin American reality. Great. Let's talk about it. I think that is the way to move it forward and to advance. Ricardo Patara, very briefly, because, I mean, you've mentioned most of the things that I wanted to say, and I won't go into the discussion whether renting or leasing is correct or not. I'm, I have some concerns with the proposal I'm against it, but I think that we are opening this up to diverse uses, and that might not be great, I mean, because it, it says it includes a list of potential uses, but it's not restricted to, and I think that opens up a, a, a dangerous, a, a dangerous space. Now there are some conditions like correct or thorough use, but who's checking what a correct use means? It's just up for interpretation, maybe, and that could be dangerous. Another part. And it goes hand in hand with the justification, providing information to the community as to the address that is being used or not. But the text says that ISPs, we want ISPs to register the information. And the text in English says ISP and users shall ensure the information is correct. So that shall or there, it's like they can but it's not mandatory and, and who's checking it. So I, I just have the, the, those concerns in, in terms of the wording. Thank you, Ricardo. Next. Gustavo from Mexico. I am in favor of the proposal. I think there are some things to improve. This is a good initial proposal and a gray area, considering some of the LACNI guidelines is that it is an urgent matter to be able to address it, to do it quickly, and, and, and to move forward, and that we are we agree that we all want to be protected. I think that some of the comments that are against the, the proposal, because, I mean, most of these we can solve with LACNIC's support. Those uh, people or entities that want to rent prefixes, 
uh, have to be registered correctly in the community. They have to follow the guidelines that we all follow currently up to date with our memberships, have all the security safeguards in place. So I think we want to make a community that is open to the internet and we want to reach more and more people. And we cannot do it on our own. We need to have more ISPs. We need to open more rooms up for registering in, in LACNIC and having the possibility to rent prefixes, actually. Adelante con la pregunta, por favor. Buen día, David McMahon de Colombia. Eh... Hello from Colombia. So my, I have a big, big concern in my market in Colombia, many ISPs, we, we don't have IPs. And since we are such a small market, we've all, 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 always worked from scarcity. My biggest concern is that the prefixes will leave the region. I think there's a big gap. The idea is that prefixes could be used by members in the region. That's one of my biggest concerns. Other than that, I don't have other further comments. We are supporting the small companies, the small ISP EPs in other regions. In general, in other regions, they work from a point of view of abundance. Now, from the standpoint of LACNIC and our members, we always work from the point of view of scarcity. And I think that this proposal could be a way of addressing this. So are you in favor? Are you against? I'm in favor. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mariela. Mariela Rocha, policy coordinator at LACNIC. I just wanted to say that we are speaking about requirements, RPKI, for example, additional requirements. And just please remember that those requirements are not in the regular uh, as, uh, assignment requests that we have for those who are requesting uh, resources. Just that quick comment. Another comment? You say, Franco? We have a question and a, and, a, and a hand raised online. Okay, so let's go with a new hand. Augusto Camacho. Can you hear us? Name Cesar Augusto Camacho. I'm in Colombia. Um, ISP who has received addresses. No, no, not addresses. I'm sorry. I haven't received addresses in three years. I'm in favor of that proposal that will solve, that would solve our problem with regards to, to the needs that some ISPs have. We are requesting addresses and we need to resort to IP brokers and that brings other geolocalization problems. So thank you. Question, name, organization, and position. Hello, Francisco Lara, Punto Net Ecuador. I agree with the proposal. I think that to a certain extent it will solve or give opportunities to small ISPs. I also think that we need to consider security aspects, make sure that we can check that the recipients are those who actually we want them to receive and open up the internet for well everyone and i just wanted to say that in forums like this we always promote ipv6 so it's also important to consider that there is a requirement that receivers must use ipv6 for whatever purposes that they are whether they are isps whether they are universities because IPv6 and the use of IPv6 and expanding the use of IPv6, we need to make content available on V6 because I think that is what will bring the definite solution to this problem that we have been trying to address for so many years. So after Franco and Hernan, Hernan will be la the last question. We are 10 or 15 minutes late. Why 
not using uh, the transfers that already exist in the policy instead of inventing subterfuges uh, to invent uh, reasons for uh, using it. If the idea is to make an effective use of the uh, 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 today it's easy to do it this way. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Hernan. Thank you, Fernando, for your input. Hernan Ceoane from Argentina. In principle, I agree with uh, moving forward with this proposal. I think that it will collaborate. But my only comment is that, as a colleague just said, many of those of us that are going to debate this policy are not at LACNIC, in LACNIC, because it's the people that don't have any resources here. We're the only ones here are the ones that have the resource. We are not listening to the voices, nor are we engaging the people that don't have resources. So I think that this is something that we should realize. We are speaking for those that is not here at the table. So as the colleague said, and as an IXP, sometimes we suffer this reality. So lest uh, not forget uh, let's not forget this because uh, many people that are not in, uh, in LACNIC they wouldn't be able to give uh, their feedback and I think that they would absolutely agree thank you Hernan I fully agree with Hernan thank you well so we thank the authors a round of applause for them so thank you all for sharing your views now we're going to measure the temperature in the room so that we can consider it when measuring consensus. We remind you that even if the Zoom tool offers you a window saying voting, we are not actually voting. We are just considering, we're probing uh, um, uh, the temperature. Uh, we are uh, seeing to what extent there's consensus. The consensus is based on uh, the comments in the forum, and by no means should this be considered as voting. For those of you in uh, Zoom, please, uh, you'll get uh, um, the uh, poll, and here, let's count. The people in favor of this proposal, please raise your hands and keep it up for a few seconds. Manténgala un momento más. Keep it up. Keep keep your hands up. El staff me confirma si tal. And the staff, could you please confirm whether you have completed the counting so you can take your hands down. Now the people. The people against the proposal, please raise your hands and keep it up for a few seconds. En contra de la against the proposal. Okay. Bien, pueden bajar, por favor. So you can, uh, that's it. Aquellas personas que se abstienen, por favor. So abstentions, please raise your hands and keep them up. Bien, pueden bajarla. Thank you. The proposal LAC 202043, the use of resources by third parties authorized by the uh, um, 
beneficiaries finishes on uh, June the 10th, 2024, so starting that day and uh, in the next, uh, within two weeks, we will inform the community. We will tell them whether this uh, proposal reached consensus or not, so we invite you to continue the discussion in the mailing list. So, a round of applause for the proposal.